Hello folks, this is Chris, KY4CKP, and this week on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to show the build process for the STF-1 direction finding antenna that we showcased in an earlier video. This could be very helpful in doing a fox hunt, uh, tracking down somebody who may be causing interference on your repeater. We just had the fox hunt video earlier as well. And this is a really cool little kit. It's not a very complicated kit. There's a little bit of soldering required, but not very much. Nothing to be very scared of. So we're going to kind of go over that build process and show you how to, how to build it and compare it to one that's about 25 years old. They're still making the same kit today. So that's what's coming up next on El Cara Ham Radio. So the first thing that, uh, of course, we want to do is uh, just talk a little bit about the SDF-1 here. Uh, it's a nice little kit from uh, Rainbow Kits. It's not terribly expensive, and it's something that a club could have two or maybe even three of these, especially if you want to get into fox hunting or if you uh, ever need to hunt down a troublesome signal. And, of course, uh, one of the first things we do is we uh, get the kit. Uh, you can see how it ships. And we start to lay out the pieces, organize the pieces, because uh, we're going to want to take a look here in a few minutes at making sure everything is included that's supposed to be included. You don't want to get halfway through a build and you're missing a key component. So, uh, so that's kind of the first thing is just lay everything out, organize it, identify it. And uh, there's even an included parts list, checklist, so you can uh, go through. Make sure you've actually got everything. Make sure everything looks to be in good uh, functioning shape. Uh, you know, make sure there were no holes in the uh, in the original bag during shipment or any of those kinds of things. Uh, and so that's kind of what AC4DM here uh, and uh, KY4BDP and a few of our other uh, members were doing for this uh, nice, simple little build project. Just, uh, again, laying everything out, getting it organized, identifying all the parts, and then going through uh, the parts list. And then we'll be getting into the actual build process. And AC4DM is going to be giving... Uh, Brian, KY4BDP, uh, a little instructions on uh, doing the simple soldering. Uh, there's a very small board and just a few components that do need to be soldered. Uh, nothing nothing hard. It's all, you know, what we used to call through-hole type components. No surface mount uh, or anything uh, uh, tiny like that. So they checked all the parts. Everything was there. So they were good to go. They were good to go ahead and move on to the next stage of the build, which is going to be the actual... Uh, soldering of components on this small little board. You can see it's a small board and there's not that many components to it. So let's jump right in. Right. What you got to do when you get to this next stage here. And a connection. Awesome. All right. All right, Don. All right. I got two that are so kind of... So you get that one, sit that one right there. All right. Now do I put the solder there well, and then just... What you do, you... You or do I put on, a little bit on the tip? You, well, you can put a little on the tip, but you, you put then you put your tip right down, and then you feed this little. Since you see that baby flow, that's it. That's it. That's all you need. You, when that sucker turns to liquid and flows in there, you got it. Okay, now now that you've done that, yes, sir. So we so, don't need that anymore. So all you do, you can just take those off because the res resistor is not going anywhere now. It's not going anywhere. It's not going to fall out. So now you can actually straighten those up. Uh huh. So we can see what you're doing as far as soldering them. Now. All right. Okay. That way they won't fall out on you. Now you just undo the thing there and you take a, a visual of it on the front. Make sure that everything's like you want it. All right, folks, in this little segment here, uh, AC4DM uh, Don, our club president, is uh, working on some of the fine coax cable. Uh, it's coax. It's just very, very thin and fine. But he uh, trimmed off a little piece there, and he's getting the braid uh, twisted together and separated in the center conductor. You're going to run this through the slip joint PVC pipes. You don't have to use any glue or anything, really. 
uh, connected to the uh, the box that's sort of the T in the center. And you're going to run some of that fine coax to each end because there's going to be those antennas on each end. And, of course, you run the other ends into the center of the box here. So we've got the uh, the pieces ready to go. We've got the uh, them trimmed and the, um, the uh, shielding uh, separated from the center conductor ready to make those connections a little bit later in the build. Here you can see uh, he's attaching the, uh, the telescoping antennas to, uh, to each of the endpoints. You've got the, uh, the top and bottom parts, and again, you'll eventually be attaching the uh, coax to uh, each one of those uh, pieces. Here you can kind of see there's a tab that's in there that's going to be your solder joint uh, for, uh, for making those connections. And again, another look at that uh, here. Uh, it's a very simple little build, some very simple soldering skills. There you can see it soldered on to, uh, to each of the, uh, the antennas, the, uh, the top and the bottom part. And you're just going to do that procedure on each end of the antenna. All right, so now then what we'll do now is we will go here to the, to the wiper like this and see it shows zero because you have zero ohms, okay? That, so, then, so then if we start turning this thing, so watch it here. Right. So you're turning here. Yeah, yeah. As I turn, see? How about that? So that tells you it's good, see? So you can see here, folks, it's a very simple little PCB board, just a few components on it. It's not any extreme soldering skills to go through. Just take your time, and almost anybody could figure that out, even if you don't solder much, or maybe it even might be your first time. You could probably get through that. And uh, there's a BNC connector to bring the antennas out, and a few pre-cut holes to allow the controls to come out of the box. They did have to enlarge one of those, but no big deal. They have that going out the other hole, don't they? Yeah, it goes out here. Yeah. They got it on the side on this here, where it was mm -hmm. on the bottom on that one. That's why yep. I was looking at it there, see, because they got it. Which kind of makes sense the way it's laid out. Yeah. It's actually going to give us more relief. Just to stick it through the 930 or whatever it was. There we go. All right. And then this hole is too small. Yeah, quarter inch. Perfect. All day long. Works like it belongs, actually. Mm -hmm. All right, folks, and here you can see we're getting towards the end of the build. They've got uh, most of the components in the box, the little uh, motherboard there, and uh, putting in some of the final uh, control units, uh, components that come through the, the box itself. Uh, we saw they had to make that one hole just a little bigger. Uh, not a big deal, though. And they're just going to put the washers and the, uh, the nuts and everything on to uh, lock those components into place. Now, you see that loop of wire kind of sticking up there? That's going to get cut, and that's going to become the connectors for the antenna with the BNC connector that you see right there. And, um, and so that's what that's going to eventually become, not just a, a random odd uh, loop of, of wire there. So, yeah, they're starting to uh, kind of get to where they're going to be wrapping this one up. And so uh, it's a nice, simple little build. And you can see the little twist ties in there. There's plenty of room for the 9-volt battery that you'll use for the unit. And uh, I think they're going to potentially look at remoting something for a battery a little bit later as well. There it is. Yeah, it went away. Yeah, went away briefly there. She went, went around it. All right, folks, it's just about time to start wrapping this one up. Uh, we introduced the SDF-1 in our previous video, and uh, we saw the kits were still available. So we went ahead and got one in and uh, wanted to go through this nice, simple little build process. It's a really fun build process uh, for a club to do, and it can become a, a nice little asset for a club. If you want to get into fox hunts, if you want to train people on how to triangulate signals, uh, these can work really well for that. They're not very heavy. They're not very expensive. Uh, they work really well, and it's just a lot of fun to do the build. And, of course, they kind of break down, and you can store them in a fairly small, uh, you know, ammo can or plastic container or something and have two or three of these kits laying around potentially, again, for fox hunts or to do some training on that stuff. You know, we had a case recently where a member accidentally locked down their key, and we had to go hunt them down because they were locking up our repeater, and it was totally on accident. So that's pretty much it for this one, folks. This is Chris, KY4CKP for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. Stay tuned for those future videos, and we'll see you folks next time, 73.